The House preparing a vote on a war powers resolution, debating that now, calling for limits on the military action President Trump can take against Iran. And the president responding to Republican Senator Mike Lee of Utah, who said yesterday's briefing on Iran was, quote, probably the worst he's seen on a military issue. I had calls from numerous senators and numerous congressmen and women saying it was the greatest presentation they've ever had. Mike and Rand Paul disagreed because they want information that, honestly, I think is very hard to get. It's okay if the military wants to give it, but they didn't want to give it. And it really had to do with sources and information that we had that really should remain at a very high level. Could we individually maybe give one or two of them some information? Possibly, if we can do that. I get along great with Mike Lee. I've never seen him like that. The president also saying the strike killed a man who killed many Americans. Senator Mike Lee joins us now from Capitol Hill. You heard what the president said. Senator, good afternoon. Uh, your response to him. My response to him is that I have never challenged the attack on General Soleimani. In fact, within hours after that attack, I issued a statement saying that the American people were made safer by it. My concern with yesterday focused primarily on the fact that moving forward, uh, we were given no indication that the next steps with regard to Iran will involve consultation with and authorization from Congress, as is required by the Constitution. In fact, those assigned to come and brief us yesterday from the administration didn't share this president's view uh, that has been very respectful toward his commander in chief power. I applaud this president. I support this president. This president has been fantastic. He's been unprecedentedly deferential to the American people and restrained in his use of the commander in chief power uh, more than any other president in my lifetime. The briefers yesterday didn't exhibit the same level of respect and deference and restraint that President Trump has shown, and I think that's unfortunate. Uh, the vice president, adding to what the president alluded to there, saying that some things could not be shared, uh, saying that the way you look at it, uh, methods, sources and methods had to be protected. We're simply not able to share with every member of the House and Senate the intelligence that supported the president's decision to take out Soleimani. I can sure assure the viewers that there was a threat of an imminent attack. Do you buy that? Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, uh, here again, they're arguing the wrong issue with me. Uh, Rand Paul and I are in two different places on this. Uh, Rand Paul, as I understand it, uh, challenges the attack on General Soleimani. I don't. I, I, I have accepted as a given in this circumstance that they may well have had legitimate authority to do what they did. My concern deals with what we do with Iran moving forward. And that response by Vice President Pence doesn't address my central concern. It is important that Congress authorize the use of military force when we engage in any kind of sustained military action. That's what I'm concerned about, and that's what our briefers were, were so dismissive of yesterday. Do you think we're at war with Iran now? I asked the same question to Senator Duckworth a little bit ago. You know, we're in a position where we easily could uh, get into a war with Iran, and that's where it's especially important that we have a debate and a discussion. That's one of the ways that we avoid getting into war, and one of the real genius features of the Constitution was to make it more difficult to get into war, specifically by requiring that the war power be exercised only by Congress. When we have that debate and discussion under the full view of the public, we make it more difficult to get into war and more likely that when we do take that unfortunate and difficult decision, we have the support of the American people. I understand that you've signed on to Senator Tim Kaine's War Powers Resolution that will come up in the Senate with some tweaks, and I'll ask you about that in a second. But your colleague, Senator Tom Cotton, uh, told me last night that the War Powers Act is unconstitutional intrusion of Congress into the president's constitutional authorities. Every, every president of both parties has believed that since it was passed in 1973. Second, Congress can act to cut off funding for military operations anytime it wishes. Um, the case goes back to George Washington to be able to strike targets of opportunity to protect our nation. Your response to him? Yeah, do you know what else goes right back to George Washington? It's George Washington's view that uh, the president's inherent authority can be exercised without Congress insofar as it's necessary to deal with an imminent or uh, uh, presently occurring attack. But that following that, in order to engage in a more sustained military effort, it does require the approval of Congress. Look, focusing on the constitutionality of the War Powers Act is completely missing the point. The War Powers Act is best understood as a procedural mechanism whereby debate can be advanced and accelerated within Congress 
to weigh in on the war power and to weigh in on whether or not the executive branch is authorized to take certain sustained military actions. Last thing, uh, on impeachment, do you think this is going to go quickly and, and how do you think it'll go? Look, I, I, the President of the United States has not done anything impeachable. He hasn't done anything criminal. He hasn't even done anything wrong. President Trump succeeded where President Obama tried and failed for years to convince Ukraine to investigate allegations of deeply rooted corruption within the energy company Burisma. That's not wrong, and it sure as heck isn't impeachable. This president is going to be acquitted, he's going to be exonerated, and I think the Democratic Party is going to look very bad, appropriately, for doing this to President Trump. And we're never going to hear from John Bolton in the Senate, do you think? You know, it's difficult to tell exactly who we're going to hear from and who we're not going to hear from in advance. But what we do know is that we can't proceed to any of it unless or until we receive the articles of impeachment from the House of Representatives. Uh, what I do know, Brett, is that based on witness after witness that we've heard from, we haven't heard anything new uh, since Ambassador Volcker testified back in October. And Ambassador Volcker basically just told us uh, what I just said, which is that President Trump succeeded here in getting Ukraine to investigate Burisma. Okay. That's not a problem. Senator Mike Lee, we appreciate your time. Thank you.